Hello everybody, welcome back. Right, here we are. This is uh, part two of the of the of the bow corrections build. I, I don't know if I'm going to end up doing these videos in, in, in parts or whatever, but uh, this is part two. I, I, I was going to do the bow corrections all in one, but it's, it's got a bit deeper than that because of things we're discovering. So today, to put you in real time, today is the 21st of December. So this sprue goo has had a real good time to dry and harden off. So that'll be great for sanding. Um, the last bit of the video I did was actually in late November. So that's had a month. Now looking at this cardboard template, I may have mentioned this before. I can't remember because it's all so far apart. You can see up here, there is a pencil line just below my finger. You see this line here? That is where the actual stem at deck level should be and you can see it's about three millimeters too low that the hull is kind of the hull is flat and it should be more you know like a rowing boat it's kind of when you look at it from the side it's like this short shape you know or like a galleon um and and they've they flatten the hull out and as a result the position of the portholes is all different and stuff it's a bit it's big I mean I've been talking a lot with Jason about this as you know this is the, the um, Jason from model kit stuff this is a a buddy build we're doing um, and yeah it's just the hull is a, a mess accuracy wise um, obviously there's those of you out there will say you know that's absolutely fine but accuracy wise the hull is a mess um, and I think I've mentioned that a lot of times now I know that Jason is what he's doing he's looking at getting it aesthetically correct so in other words it looks okay and there's a couple of major things I'm going to point out here now um, that makes it look just wrong in my opinion um, but what I want to, we just want to make it look good and the trouble is with modeling if you're one of these people like me you see something you can't unsee it and now whenever I look at this hull I kind of think mm, it's a bit flat you know, um, when you look at it in pictures, it definitely has a kick up on the bow and it definitely has a kick up on the stern. So what I've done, I've got the the actual book. I've used the book and I've done this sort of um, this sheet here. And what we've got is these positions here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the positions for the templates for checking the shape of the hull. 0 to 3, so this is 0 and this is three so in that area there okay so, so we're behind we're actually this is zero here we're actually behind the stem okay um we've got uh 86 to 75 millimeters so that's what it should be um the kit is 84 to 73 so here and here it's two millimeters too low. The overall height of the hull is two millimeters too low, too low. And up here, we know from that it's about three millimeters. So it should come up and then be, you know, lift up. Now I've not gone into points of millimeters, so it could be sort of 1.8 here and 2.5 here and then three here sort of thing. But all I'm after here is an approximation to get to get something going. And then the whole rest of the hull, it's one millimeter short. And then when we get to the stern, it's two millimeters short at plate 20 or former 20. And as you can see, former 20 is here, which again is about 20 mil short of the actual stern itself. So my intention is, is to lift the front and the back of the deck or bow on the stern. But do I really want to lift a whole millimeter all the way down? The answer to that is kind of a yes, because overall, the armour is a mess. Um, these circles, by the way, these are sink marks in the in the plastic. They've got to be dealt with. But the actual armour is a mess. It's too short. According to Jason, it's too short. I haven't, I haven't noticed that bit. But it's actually also too low down. The degaussing cable is completely in the wrong place. Um, and it's also the wrong form. It's kind of square. It should be semi-circular so we've got some plastic strip for that um, so yeah there's a lot a lot of work to do on this hull to get it aesthetically correct now Jason's not going to the trouble of doing the deck at, at the moment as things stand he may change his mind um, 
but I think I will. So let me have a little bit more of a play with this. I wanted to start this video by explaining my madness and then go from there. Of course, the other thing I could do is ignore the one millimeter all the way down, okay, and just add two millimeters here, sort of one and a half here and one here. Okay, so we still get that gentle slope. Overall, it'll be a millimetre too short. Who cares? But it'll be a lot less work than bringing all this up a millimetre. Because remember, if I bring the deck up, like you can see here, if I bring the deck up by the three millimetres at the back, why haven't I got to build up the whole sides to get to match? Okay. The other thing that's wrong is these uh, horses are way too high up. They need to come way down. So there's going to be a lot of cutting and filling there. Um, and I also need to put, build up something for the holes at the front here. So it comes out. This, um, I mean, this, this will really surprise you. This hole here, the, the stem uh, holes is upside down and in the wrong position. I know it's shocking, isn't it? Um, so there we go. What I don't know is, of course, this is, as I've said, this is a noise now hull in Scharnhorst. Oh. Um, maybe this is correct for noise now, wrong for Scharnhorst, but Trump had just decided to go down that road. But anyway, um, there we are. And of course, another thing that's going to be affected by raising the deck is the position of the portholes relative to the deck. When you look around this area here, they all appear too close to the deck surface um, and they need to be moved down. So if we raise the deck, that means we can just draw the portholes up and we're absolutely fine. The other thing I'm a little put out by is this here. As you know, this is my resin piece that I've made. And I know this, this is all the right size and everything. And if you look at where this last porthole would be, it's about there. OK, it's roughly there. Now, if you look at pictures, it looks like it's too high in relation to that point. But if we lift this up one millimeter, it's going to be spot on. So everything is all sort of adding to this, this one millimeter. Well, it's two millimeters here. So it's going to be like sort of one and a half millimeters here. But there is a definite sort of kick, almost like a spoiler on the boot of a car at the back here. It's got this definite kick. So um, anyway, here it's one millimeter and here, here it's two millimeters. So, as you can see, it's going to be, I don't know, I, I don't know what to do, but um, I need to make a decision and get on and do something, because otherwise Jason will finish this kit and I'll still be scratching my head, looking like a bloody idiot. Okay, so, I've got those um, supports in, I've got the deck on, and as we can see now, there's the, there's the modified height of the, of the stem. What's very interesting... And I'm really glad I've done this. I'm going to have to message Jason and say, you best check this. I'm going to have to check my wooden deck. Because as you can see here, I don't know if you can see close up, where these bollards are going here, they mount to the deck and they also have lines on the hull that line up. I don't know if you can see those there. There are, there are lines there and there. I've just marked over the pencil. Now, as you can see, they're lining up. When we move further down the ship, we have more of them. And as you can see, when I get to here, they no longer line up. But it's like the deck is longer than the hull. And then when I get to the, the bow, as you can see, it's almost as though the deck wouldn't fit in the stock hull anyway. It's almost like it wants me to do this mod. So then I'm going to have to get my deck now and check that it's actually going to fit the wooden deck because if the wooden deck doesn't fit we need to shorten it all to make it fit then I want to do that now rather than later so let's go and get the wooden deck and have a look okay, so the deck fits perfectly the wooden deck fits the plastic deck perfectly so therefore this is acting in our favour now because the plastic deck is too long for the plastic hull so either there's been some shrinkage in the mould or it's all just wrong from day one because th this is just everything is wrong <laughs> it's really strange anyway um the bismarck is so much better than this and it was i think it was their first one the first of their big 200th battleships well the arizona was first wasn't it but anyway um just one word of note if you are building along with us 
in the instructions, in the KA instructions, I've got mine in a folder here. Um, when you get to here, it's as clear as mud. They're telling you to read these, these raised bits, these orange bits here. They're telling you to remove them. Don't remove those two bits there. Okay, you can see them here. Um, they're telling you to remove them there. And then you go in a couple of pages into the manual. And where are we? We're here. It's actually the next page on the um, Vauxhall. And they've got photo etch bits going on there. So don't remove them. They're not supposed to be removed. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's um, that's fitting on there. Lovely. And if I take this off. Um, so yeah, we're going to remove those bits there. In fact, I'm just going to check while we're online. I am going to check if they should be removed as well. That's okay. We've got resin pieces to replace them. So we're going to remove those two there. Those two pins. I'm guessing... Yeah, we're going to remove them as well because there's no holes for them. We're going to leave that little square lump there. And then when we get to the front, these three bits here, these three little raised areas here, they're redone in PE, as you can see there. So it's all looking good. Right. So, yeah, don't remove those bits there. So uh, that's that. But as you can see, everything lines up perfectly. Uh, those holes line up lovely. They line up on there beautifully. If anything, it needs a tiny bit trimmed off the back because it's pushing up tight against that deck. So if I were to pull this, let's just take this off of here. If I were to pull this forward a touch, oh, come away. Oh, bloody typical, isn't it? Come off. So if I was to pull that forward a touch, it would fit. Much, much better than have the back, the back end of it. But, uh, there we go. So now we know our plastic deck is fine. We can mess with the hull. So I need to get this wooden deck put away. Just one word before I put it away. When you look on your squeaky chair, when you look on your how your um, wood deck is packed up, um, this main piece here from the stern has actually got a staple through it here. When you put it away, make sure you put that staple through because if you look at Jason's kit, his actually moved off the end of the cardboard here and it's damaged the back end of the of the deck. So bear that in mind. Um, so yeah, keep a staple in there to keep that away from the end of the box. Stop it bending. Right. Okay, so that's the deck all put away and everything. Right. Um, this is what gets me with these ship kits. Everything's so fragile. So I think I'm going to go the whole hog and go <clears throat> the three mil at the bow, two mil at the stern, one millimeter all the way along, and just go for it because, to my eye, that just looks so much better with that front raised up. Um, I guess you can't see it, you know, hold it in your hand. But uh, something else that's seriously missing on here, if you look at any image of Sharon Horse when she's docked and you sort of look along, like on this kind of angle, hang on, let me get back away. You look along this kind of angle, where the armour plates start, there's a definite kick. You know, there's a, there's a definite kick in the upper hull above the armour plate. So I don't know if I can try and get that in as well, but... Um, but this uh, this armor plate needs to come up much higher because you can you can see here this is the water line as depicted by the book and you can see the armor plating it's only about four millimeters above the water line and I think it would have been higher than that but uh, certainly it comes up at the front here and apparently it needs to come forward as well according to Jason so lots of work to do lots of things to remove and everything I'm kind of tempted to just remove this degaussing cable and start sanding everything away so we've got a flat sheet to work with but I am I do really want to see if I can make this deck work okay so here we go the uh, the deck as you can see is now sitting 
about three millimeters higher at the stem, two and a half millimeters higher at the stem, and then it's two millimeters higher here. Okay, this this line, this black mark here, is um, former number three. So, and as you can see, what we've done, we've put two millimeters in here. And then two millimeters in here, and then I've put a piece of two and a half millimeter here, and then sanded it down to blend. The deck is very thick, so it's not like the deck is thin and it's going to follow whatever I do. So you can imagine if we have like a, you know, if this is a two millimeter piece here, and then we add, say, say this is a two millimeter piece here, and then we add a two and a half, the step doesn't really matter because the deck is quite thick and it will just form a natural curve. So but what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll blend it anyway. So you can see I've blended that that two and a half mil into the two mil there, sort of roughly. Filled in the little notches where these little um these little parts go. I was asking Jason what these are because he's the, the the ship. I know nothing about ships other than they're made of metal, <laughs> and the decks are wood normally. Um, these are the lookouts for the pilots to 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 to, to guide the ship into dock. Um, so they fold up and they, they should be folded up, not sort of left out all the time like that. I'm leaving them for now because I'm not sure if I'm going to have them there or not. We were talking about the other night, um, so uh, we will get round to that. But so basically I filled them in, obviously, just roughly because um, cause I want a nice level surface to add some sprue to or strip to. What I'm going to have to do here, because of the, I doubt if you can see it, but because it's angled, if I just put a straight piece of strip in, I'm going to have like a gap because the, the, the deck, this is the surface of the hull, okay, and this is the surface of the deck, like that, and the hull is like that, the deck is like that, so what I've got here, bring that out a bit actually, what I've got here is a if I just put a straight piece in like that, I'm going to have a big gap in here. So what I'm going to do is get a, a, some 2 mil card and then sand the end, edge of it to a wedge and then cut a strip off. So I end up putting a piece in that's like that. And then what we'll do is sand the outside. And what I want to do, at the, looking in the book, the edge of the, the I can't remember what this is called now, um, this part here has a nice radius on it, which the kit doesn't have. So I'm going to put a nice radius on there all the way down. Um, and then we... What we will have is the wooden deck will then go on here and we will have a um, a step down. So this will be like the gully, the gutter if you like. And then there's a fence on the bottom of the railing. The railings that go across as a fence and that will form that gully there. So this one here should be dark grey. Um, this here will be wood and this is the wooden deck. So there we are. So it's all going to come together, I can assure you. Um, and I'm sure Jason will keep me going. This won't become another Titanic. So there we go. Uh, so that's that bit done. So I'm going to call it a day there. And what I'm going to do is carry on down. I've removed my resin piece from the stern, as you can see there. So that's been cut out. So now I've got to pack the bottom of this up, make another resin piece and fit it higher up. Exa I'm not exactly sure how, high, how much higher I'm going to go yet. I think I'm going to do all the work and get the deck in place first. And then I can see where the resin piece needs to go. But um, I think that's going to be a lot nicer with that lifted up a bit. So uh, there we go. But um, don't think for a minute that, you know, you should do this to your model. And, and you know, it's just the, the trouble is with me. I've seen it. And as I said, now I can't unsee it. So I've just got to change it. Um, and I really enjoy this kind of work. Um, I love modifying ship hulls. I really do enjoy it. So, uh, it's just a shame it's so bloody big. But anyway, there we go. So, I'm going to get the rest of this strip all the way down here. And then when we come back for the next part, I'll show you what it looks like. And I'll have put the stern piece in. and uh, Or maybe we'll do a bit of that on camera. I don't know. But um, once we get this done, then we can get the... We know what position this deck is going to be once we get the stern done. Because the stern... The position of the deck determines the position of the forecastle, which then determines the shape of the of the stem. And as you can see here, it's not a lot of work. It's just a bit more sanding and get it all blended in. And then that nice sharp point at the at the stem there. So, uh, but it's worth remembering if you've got this kit, guys. Um, I did actually message Jason last night. I said, "Are you aware this deck is too long?" Um, what's interesting 
the hull has gnaws now on it. When we look at the Vauxhall, it says Scharnhorst. So there you go. And they got it wrong. Um, so uh, so there we go. Um, but yeah, if you've got one of these, just remember, do some fitting. The deck is, is physically too long to fit into the hull. So what you need to do is either remove some material from here and from your wood deck or remove some from here to let the to let the the um the folks will sit in a bit sit back a bit further oh, by the way what i've done here sorry i didn't explain um we've put the strips in here and then in the middle of there you can see i've filled up this where the um the dodgy holes is on the stem filled that in that's bits of plastic shaft that's been shoved in and then all glued in and then gone over with them um, with uh sprue glue and then in the top here there's a piece of sheet glued in and down inside if you can see down inside there's all sorts of sprue glue and all sorts and that is basically a solid lump and then once this is all fitted I could drill down through and we'll get a nice hose in there rather than just having a big hole and I'll probably have to do some blending in there because this is all very thick and I think you'll find it sort of blends in it's a big casting rather than fabricated I don't know rather than, uh, than having all these sharp corners but uh, we'll do that before we get the deck going Welcome on. back. This is uh, a few days later now. I've done a bit of work, which I'll show you in a minute. And um, Right, so, chatting to Jason the other night. Um, <clears throat> and basically, he... Well, I, I think I knew anyway, but he was reminding me about the, um, the fact that Kit's uh, anchor hoses are way too small. They're way too shallow this way. Um, I mean, you can see here, I've, I've put this plastic strip in, as you know, and lifted the, the deck up. So you can see how much I've lifted the deck up there. I mean, it's, not, it's not pushed fully back, but you can see how much I've lifted it up there. So, you know, if you don't lift the deck up, you need to come down by that much as well. So you're going to be coming down to about here, so you can see how bad it is. And also, there's supposed to be uh, like a bulge there, a very, um, a very slight bulge on the surface you can see here um either that or it's radius down i can't i can't quite make it out i'm gonna to have to look at some photos online the other thing is this part here i think is completely missing from the kit um this part here it comes over the top of the anchor so we'll have to do something there um and the other thing i've noticed is when you look at this plan of the deck this drawing doesn't seem to match their 3d drawing there um you can see the distance here looks a lot wider than it does on there and when you actually look at the kit you can see it's wider the other thing i'm going to do if you notice we have these on the deck we have these raised areas here and they're the wrong way around but that's going to have to be removed because the wooden deck it doesn't tell you to remove that in the um in the ka set but that's going to have to be removed otherwise you're going to end up with you're going to have the wooden deck going down on top of that the main wooden deck and then there's another couple of pieces that go down to represent these the right way round so you're going to end up with like that great big thick piece of plastic there plus two layers of wood it's going to look awful so um so yeah it's worth bearing in mind also bear in mind there's a picture of the deck the, the bow um in the ka models instructions and it's the wrong way round the picture is actually inverted so uh, be very careful there um but uh, while you've been off camera, so yeah, I've, I've made a, that's what I was talking about, I've made a paper template here of that area so I can get a rough idea of how it's got to go. And as you can see, I can put that there. Remember, when you look at these drawings, they are kind of flat. It's almost as though you're working, you're down the centre line of the ship. So as you can see, when you look at here, if you look at the distance from that front edge to the bow, to the stem, it's 61 millimetres. If you do it here, okay, and you'd have to roll the rule around, it's more like 65. So be very careful. So, you know, what I'm doing is, is I'm putting that there. So it's on the centre and then bringing it around so you can see that that's how I'm getting my position. Okay, so remember that. When, when, you, when you look at stuff like this, um, especially on the stern where it curves around, it's not so important on the bow because it's just a shallow angle but when you actually do a drawing like this you're actually looking at it flat so if this was a sphere 
you'd be looking at it like you're looking through the center line and you 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 as a drawing not as a photograph but as a drawing um, it's the same when they do things like you'll see a picture of the where's a picture of the stern um, when you see a drawing of the stern you will see in the background you'll see the bag whereas in reality because of the the, um, the focal point, the, the, you'd hardly see the bag because it would be so far away. It'd be a tiny little dot, but they actually draw it as as it's all flat on the sheet of paper. So be wary of that. Um, OK, so. Yeah, so they're too low. So what we've basically got to do here, these bits here, as you can see, I'll put this book out of the way. I don't want to damage this book more than I can, more than I can have to. Um, as you can see. When I put this in here, all right, it's got to come down, but it's got to go back, sorry. But when I put that in there, there you go, that's, that's about where it goes there. When I put that in there, you can see that when I cut this away down to here, that's going to be a mile away. So what I'm actually going to do is remove these lumps from here, and I'll do this on camera so you can see how I do it. And what I do, whenever I use my razor saw, Okay, I use the ASK razor saws now, but uh, I used to use this one here. Okay, you can see the blade on that one's all broken. This is the JLC. But whenever I get a blade break or anything, I don't throw it away. I super glue it to a block of plastic like this. And now what I can do here is come along and slide that in there and just cut away. So I'm going to do this side because that raised detail is getting in my way, I think. I'm just keeping the blade flat down on the plastic, as you can see here. And this becomes a great little tool for when you want to remove detail from the surface. Especially for ship modellers, this is a great tool because often you're, you're having to remove raised detail from the surface. And it's great for doing stuff like that. So um, we'll come around to the other side now. Let's get that out of the way around to here and just get in here I mean it doesn't matter if you cut into the surface a bit but be careful as you start because the blade will want to ride up the radius rather than fully cut it out There we go. I think we're almost through there. Yes, we are. We're through. I don't mean we're finished. Don't don't st stick around. You know, I know in America that's the we're through is the term for saying we're finished. <laughs> it's over. Our friendship is gone. There we go. There we go. You can see that's, uh, it's raised up a little bit there, but that's, it doesn't matter because what we're going to do is put some plastic card in there and bring that bottom right down. It's got to come about five millimetres, so it's going to come right down like that, a lot lower. When you look at the other side, you can see the difference. So I could actually glue that on there and it still wouldn't be far enough. So uh, there we go. So I'll do the other side and then sand that flat. And then I think I'll just leave that as it is for now. There we go. That's those cut off. That's sanded almost as smooth. So now we're, uh, we've got some big gaping holes there now. So lots and lots of little mods, but it's all worth it. Right, moving forward a touch. Um, I have now gone on and glued all my plastic stripping. And you can see what I've done here. I've gone from two millimetres down to one millimetre with a half millimetre piece on the top and then a ten thou piece or 025 millimetres. So it's, it's going from two to 1.75 to 1.5 to uh, 1.25 to 1 like that and what I can do now is just come along with a sanding stick and just just lightly sand that just to kind of take the sharp corners off and blend it all in and that will be pretty much ready for the deck to go on I just want to feel and make sure I've got it roughly the same on both sides obviously it's, it doesn't need to be a, a, a thing of precision but it's good to get it as nice as you can. 
and then what we can do is get a pencil draw some pencil on there just like so notice I'm not using black magic marker because it makes a mess when you start gluing things it goes out everywhere so I'll do is just lightly sand over that now and I can see how much of where the pencil is left behind because I've got a little bit of pencil left at each joint so that's fine so that's it they are pretty much feathered out now so that deck will fit in there like so I think that's about the right place and it's to go forward a bit or back a bit should I say so there we go so they've got a nice transition there for the two to the one and they'll go in like so as you can see at the stern you can see we've got the, the plastic strip in there and I have also cut out the old bra uh, brass the old resin insert made up another one and put that in you can see we've got some plastic strips so it's lifted up now so when we put the well, I've also added plastic strips to the top of these formers these aren't glued in yet they're just in there loose because I'm not sure about the width of the hole um, <clears throat> but basically get this so that these bollards line up there we go we take, take that down and you can see now that we've got it nice and flush on there okay the hose pipe still lines up for the anchor and we've got our little kick up it's just a little kick up from there back so there we go so we've got should be about one and a half maybe two millimeters on the back here yeah it's just under two millimeters so so there we go in fact i think i put a I think I put a one and a half and a 0.25 in there, but uh, that's all done now. So that's cool. Um, and there we are. You can see now as well. I've drawn on here roughly where that last porthole would come, and as you can see now, it's in the correct position in relation to the end of the anchor there. So slowly, but surely, things are coming together. Now the next thing we've got to look at is this degaussing cable because this is wrong, it's square in section, it should be half round and it's just, I know, I'm not sure about here but when we get down to the down to the bow it's all out of position, it's off. So, um, but yeah, um, I can't remember what I was saying. Now, what I'm going to do is when, I, when I, I blew the strip in after I put the deck in and the trouble is if I put the strip on now it'll be very fragile and it'll probably get broken off and damaged so I'll glue it in when I've got the deck in. Um, I'd like to glue the deck in before I put the wooden deck on and then I can do all the work. I need to get the um, bilge keels done. I, I, the bilge keels, the um, docking keels. I need to get these bilge keels done as well. I don't like the look of them at all. Um, I'm not sure how to go around that. And then also we need to do work here on the um, <clears throat> on the armour belt. This comes down too low here. It should go sort of parallel with the deck pretty much. And apparently Jason says it needs to come forward. So we're going to have to remove this. And I think the best way to remove that is probably going to be with a scriber. So uh, let me have a look. Actually, I think I found the best way to remove it is with this um, with this saw again. I can come in there on the edge and just scrape away at it. Work my way through. And obviously all this... this this porthole detail is all going anyway, so I'm not worried about damaging any of that. You can see that's it's taking that off lovely. A little bit of a quick going over the sanding stick. Something a bit coarser probably. Where did it go? There it is. <coughs> just quick going over with that, just to get it down. And there we are. That's our gaussing cable gone we can get with what raised detail around those portholes because these are all going to get drilled out again anyway even if we are in the right place um, because they're all uh, elliptical because of the molding um, and we've got all the I think they're called rigors aren't they the little things that are over the top we got those in photo etch so we have to make some make up some sort of jig to fit them right so a few hours later now lots done um, I've cut out the the holes, the anchors. Obviously, this is going to have a bulge built on it. I've ordered some milliput white smooth to build that up. Um, 
I, I just thought I'd just have a little talk here about something. Some of you may be saying, why on earth have you bothered doing that, adding that extra material to the deck to lift the deck up? The main reason is because, as I said before, Trumpeter have left the deck very flat. Okay, so as you can see, we've gone from like a millimetre here to three millimetres here. All right, so we've got the, the rake on the, on the um, Atlantic bow better, and I think it looks much improved. And also, what, what they've done, it would appear that they've, all their porthole positions are all out on height. The actual, um, the armour belt is out on height. It's about six millimetres too low in places. It's also too short. Whereas at the stern, here, it's too long. Okay, so it needs to be shortened up here and it needs to be lengthened out here. The other thing is it comes along, as they all do, it comes along and then it has a, 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 a sort of... Um, <clears throat> Because they were basically great big thick plates of um, Krupp steel or whatever. And at the end, obviously, instead of having just a blank end, they had like a fairing panel that went in. So they've got that wrong as well. They haven't got this, 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 this sharp line. And also we should have a change in the hull here where the, where the sort of sharp line is. It should be about here, I think. Um, they've also got the... Um, the uh, camera's corner, the rod that goes in here, they've got that on the low position, it should be up on the high position. All the portholes are wrong. They're all in the wrong position heightways, which messes up. Obviously, if I put the, like here, if I bring that up six millimetres, okay, you can see that it'll be right below that porthole there. And then when I go to put the degaussing cable in, it'll be over the porthole. So that's not correct either. So they all need to move anyway. So I thought, well, I may as well do the deck and get that right. So that's what I've done. Now, according to the book, all the some of the, along the sort of centre of the hull, some of these portholes go go up to like four millimetres from the top edge of the deck, which I don't know. That seems very very short. So the, these are roughly, these are roughly five and a half. So I'm tempted to kind of leave these all the way along here until we get to here where adding the deck has made them all about the correct height. So sort of from, I think it's from about here back, the portals are all okay height wise, but I think they need to be changed position length wise. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's a bit of a, I mean, for example, I've done a sheet here of the porthole heights and at position three, okay, the upper porthole should be five and a half millimetres from the deck. And as you can see, at position three, if I put the deck in here, I have got the porthole at six millimeters to the old deck and sort of eight millimeters to the new deck eight and a half millimeters so that's got to come up anyway and then these are all at a position and if we go here to position one the the book says it should be seven and a half and it's actually ten so in reality, it was probably right, that one there to there, but all of this was too low. So, and if we come to here, if we go to position five, say, position five, it should be four and a half, and it's five and a half. So you can see it's all over the place. Um, so I, I, I just wanted... I mean, and the thing is, they've got to be changed lengthways anyway. So that's why I've done all this. Um, if we start looking at the second row, that's all out of position as well. So, uh, and, and the thing is, these here have to be drawn out anyway, as I said, so they're elliptical. So the thing is, there's so much to do. I just thought I may as well do the extra and have the, have the deck lifted up. And, uh, and that's what I've done. So just <laughs> because I can, I suppose. Um, but if I'd have left the deck where it was... 
I would have had the issue of the stern would have been out of shape and the all the portholes would be too high to the deck and I would have had to draw them all out and lower them all down. So getting all you know all the way along for, sort of from midships back, I'd have had to re-drill them all and move them all down. As it is, I can sort of leave the height of these because the trouble is when you start drilling loads of portholes, it's getting them in a straight line is the difficult part. And I don't think they actually can form a straight line. I think they kind of follow the curve of the deck almost. Anyway, um, so that's that. So the other thing I've done off camera, I've put some sprue goo down the sides here, just so we don't have a gap. That gives us a better area of contact for when we glue the uh, the filling pieces in here. So uh, that's that done. Um, so yeah, we're, I, I really want to get to the point where I can glue the deck on to the hull. But obviously before I do that, I need to do the work internally, putting all the uh, docking keels and everything. So I'm going to call that a day for this one. Um, we, we've done a bit, I've shown you a bit. And today is December the 23rd. And I don't know when you're going to see this, but um, it's all going out a bit late. I've been chatting to Jason. He's doing lots and lots of work on his as well. So we're both sort of way ahead of you guys. So, um, you know, bear that in mind in the comments. If you suggest something and you're ignored, it's not that we're being ignorant. It's the fact that we've probably already done it. So, and I'm no doubt we will catch up. So we'll be working like a week behind or something. But um, anyway... I'll see you all soon. Thank you for watching and bye for now.